Okay, next up we have Jean. Jean, uh, question for you is, uh, what's your favorite day to deploy code? Every day. <laughs> All right, I'm going to talk about 10 ways to doom your DevOps transformation, otherwise known as my current top 10 pet peeves. The first is onboarding. When you can't get a team member ready to contribute in the first couple days, weeks, months, whatever it takes, it shows them how important we consider them, which is not at all because we didn't prepare. Get ready for them to come on board. Get them the tools, their laptop, the permissions they need, and practice pairing and mobbing so that you're ready for them to come on. Doom number two, using the cloud. Not the cloud, but the cloud, right? We run our data center in the cloud, but we don't actually leverage the cloud. You ignore all the advantages you'd get from it, so you're not going to get any advantages, right? The um, on-demand self-service and rapid elasticity are the most important ones to make sure that you're working to get rid of any policies that prevent that from happening, or else you're just not going to have any fun. It's not going to help. It's not going to be an advantage to you. Along those same lines, there's doing Agile. Not actual Agile, but Agile. Our organization has a standardized way that the teams will be Agile, and there's no flexibility to change. But you say, we have a stand-up for an hour every day. How could we not be Agile? Go back to the principles, right? The manifesto. And if you do it right, you'll be able to get rid of the status meetings, the status reports, the status roll-ups, and the monthly summary of statuses that you have to present because no one pays attention to any of the other stuff, and they're not communicating agilely. Doom number four, the change control board. Every production change must be approved by a group that has no idea what we do. They meet several times a month, but you're expected to deploy to production multiple times a day. And what value do they add? Well, we know from Dora they add none. They actually hurt us. Go back to the principles of DevOps and the things we do that mean that you don't need to have a board reviewing it, right? Infrastructure as code and mutable infrastructure will get them the same assurances that they would have had by people just reviewing what you're saying you're going to do. It relates to being afraid to fail. A failed experiment means we'll have a lot to explain to management. But no failure means no learning. And if we don't change what we're doing or how we're doing it, we're never going to get any more benefits, right? So, Aggressively and ruthlessly protect psychological safety and strive for a generative culture. We've talked about that. A lot of the speakers have mentioned that. That is the most important thing you can do to make sure you have a successful DevOps transformation. The unchanging culture. We will do anything it takes to get to DevOps, but you can't touch our culture, right? <laughs> But DevOps is a culture, not tools or processes, and if you can't get the, you're not going to get the benefits if you just change within just your little group, right? If you don't manage your culture, your culture will manage you. Find a champion, someone that's going to keep you from getting in trouble by doing what you want to change, and then use them as protection so that you can start evangelizing to other teams. They'll watch what you want, what you have, and sure enough, culture will start changing. Along the same lines on changing policies. We'll do whatever it takes to get to DevOps, but we aren't allowed to change our policies. You know, those ones that we came up when we were deploying two, three, even four times a year, right? Find out what the intent of those uh, policies were. Show how using automation is going to gather the evidence that you're meeting those intents. And show them that actually using automation and policy and discipline is actually going to enforce those intents and not just, you know, being afraid you're going to get caught. Doom number eight, too many decision makers. Every decision means meeting with multiple stakeholders to get consensus. If multiple people are responsible for making a decision, then no one's responsible, right? And it often gets back to being afraid to fail. Again, find a champion, start highlighting some early wins, let them take credit for them so that they start helping you out. But really, that's just a stepping stone to getting to that generative culture. Doom number nine, too many metrics. We can't do that. It'll hurt our monthly or quarterly or yearly numbers, even when we know it's the right thing to do. Because when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. Pick things that you want to pick metrics that are measuring the desired outcomes and only the desired outcomes. Because if you put too many things in place, you won't be able to make any changes without screwing up some metric that you really don't care about because there's just too many of them, right? Nothing could ever change. And the last one, all of our problems will disappear as soon as we get DevOps. 
Obviously, DevOps won't make problems vanish. It usually just shines a light on them, right? Set realistic expectations. We're going to need more discipline, not less. We're going to fail more often, not less. We're going to pick something that we want to improve, work until it's better, and then pick the next best thing. It's going to be incremental. We're going to change over time. It's not a magic wand that fixes everything. Thank you very much.